All right, we only got one Wes Craven film left after this, so let's talk about his second to last movie on our list. His very last movie was Scream 4, but I already covered that on the channel. For the new watches for <laughs> us and, and the channel, uh, I'd seen this, and so had Kaylee, actually. Um, you had seen Cursed as well. Yeah. So there, yeah. there was actually a couple. I forgot because I was like, I haven't seen any Wes Craven films. And then I was like, oh yeah, Cursed. And then this movie. Yeah. So, so uh, how did your memory hold up on Red Eye? Um, I definitely remembered like the twist or like, it's not a twist, but like the big thing that happens. Um, but I kind of had it confused. I sort of thought something else occurred you thought he hijacked I thought the he plane. hijacked the plane which wasn't right um and i had no real memory of like the ending happening off of the plane i thought the whole movie took place on the plane mm. so i think you watched turbulence no 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 what is this? probably not <laughs> isn't turbulence like well it doesn't matter i saw i saw turbulence and i saw turbulence three heavy metal but i don't know if i no i think i did see turbulence two but, uh, I don't think I've seen any turbulence. I've watched films. a lot of a lot of ridiculous films mm -hmm. in my life. <laughs> a lot of offshoot sequels that no one knows exist. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I have a thing for them. Yeah. Like when I see stupid ass sequels like Roadhouse Two or something that's made like a hundred years later with a different person, or Kindergarten Cop Two with Dolph Lundgren. Mm -hmm. I always am, I'm the sucker that's You're like, like I'll watch it. Why not? Why not? <laughs> and. Half the time, I usually end up enjoying them, but no one ever gives them a chance. Yeah. So they just, you know. Anyway, and they're they're usually cash grabs, but most movies are. Um, all right, so sure. this one is, and my memory of this movie was pretty great. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, uh, there wasn't a lot that I didn't remember. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a, this is a brisk movie. Let me tell you, this is like 80 minutes and it's. Very quickly paced. Yeah. It kind of just, you know, it starts, you got her going to the airport, you got her flirting, then they get on the plane, then he's like telling her what to do on the plane, and she's like kind of fighting back, kind of fighting back, makes the call, they land, and then she like, you know, hurts him, runs home, they fight it out, movie's over. Like, yeah, it happens it's a fast. very, very quick paced film, mm -hmm. which is good. I think that this is probably Wes Craven's best paced movie. Like, mm -hmm. it just flies by. It does. It's it a does quick fly. watch. Like, and, and he made plenty of 90 minute movies. You know, this one's like 85, but like, this one just feels 35. It feels so fast. It does, yeah. I didn't mind it. I feel like it. No, it's I not think, a negative. I, yeah. It's not a negative at all. Yeah, like I think it's. I think it's really well paced. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, if you watch a short movie and it feels long, it's not. Good. It's not a good movie. No. Right. If you watch a long movie and it feels short, that's a good thing. Yeah, of course. Right. So. Every Last of Us episode feels like about five minutes. Oh God, to I don't me. even want to talk about that. It's two seconds. It's over. Yeah. So, but that's, you know, that's what just, when, when something's good, it feels fast. Right? That's true. That's not always a hundred percent accurate though. There are movies that I've watched where I was like, that's it. That, mm -hmm. that was that felt like ten minutes and nothing happened. I hated that movie. <laughs> so that's not, I'm not going to say that it true, always yeah. is the case, but it's, Usually, usually a good is. yeah determiner yes. of of at least the pacing. That's it. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. If it feels fast, then the pacing was good. Right. Right. Or you were really really into it. Moving on. <laughs> um. So Rachel McAdams, Killian Murphy. Yes, that is how you pronounce his name. Uh, and Brian Cox. Uh, Brian Cox plays the daddies in this for maybe five minutes altogether. Mm. This is predominantly Rachel McAdams and Killian Murphy on a plane sitting next to each other and chatting it up. Um, definitely wouldn't call this a horror movie. This is a thriller. Yeah. Um, this is the very definition sure. of a thriller. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the concept and everything is, is 
pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You know, she works for the hotel. Move the room. Right? Yeah. On my authority. She... Now, this wasn't the plan. The plan was to just kidnap her or whatever and make her do it. Mm -hmm. um, but someone in her family died uh, right around the exact same time. So, so bad timing for everybody. Yeah. Um, and so he has to board a plane, get a seat next to her. Not sure how he pulled that off. I don't know what kind of connections he has. Um, I know, yeah. But he's better with the airlines than the other guy in that line who oh waits in the air in the airport for hours, gets in that line, is in line for like an hour. He's like one or two people away from up to the front. Then they let a couple people in front of them because they're going to miss their plane. And he's pissed off because he's been standing there. Then he gets into an altercation with Rachel McAdams, who then, you know, has Killian Murphy step in for a second to be the knight in shining armor. And then the guy's like, this airline sucks. Yeah. And he leaves the line. Yeah. I but he's still on the same flight. He is. So it doesn't really matter. But He was probably, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter because he, I mean, oh. that's like the check-in line. So he left because he was embarrassed that he yeah. got like owned. I guess, yeah, but he obviously still got on the plane. It just so seemed to dumb to like sit again? in line for that long, to then be at the front of the line, to then have to wait like a couple more minutes, to yes. then go to the back of the line again out of embarrassment. Yeah, super lame. Super lame. Like, <laughs> I was super lame, for sure. Um, and yeah, I mean, definitely not a lot of death in this movie. Um, the only. Two people that die in this movie are the bad guys. The yep. guy who tries to kill her dad. She hits him with a tr with the van or whatever she steals. Uh, yeah. It's a it's van? not a van. No, it's not a it's van. It's like an SUV. Mm. So, she, yeah, she hits him with a car. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Killian Murphy gets shot. But I don't even think he dies. He's still alive mm -hmm. when the cops get there. He just gets arrested. For some reason, I thought he died too. No, he doesn't die. I think you're right. He's a he's a he's still a conscious now. Maybe he died of his wounds on the way to the hospital or something. But Hopefully. I'm going to say this though, and I told this to Kaylee, and I stick by this. Rachel McAdams, after the credits rolled, was killed. Oh my God! Yeah, the like <laughs> the criminal organization that was trying to assassinate the congressman it, totally yeah. went and killed her yeah dudes that have access to rocket launchers <laughs> and the kind of like connections they have to get him on a plane next to her to fool the secret service in you know with their like rocket launcher attached to their fishing lines just to get a like that's a and that's like a that's an anti aircraft missile. Like that's a no <laughs> joke. So that's military grade shit there. That's what you take down a freaking helicopter or even a plane with. That is a gnarly ass weapon that these guys have access to. If they are trying to kill a senator or whatever the hell he is and his family and their plan is to take like a rocket launcher and shoot it at a hotel, which is such a dumb plan. Um, but regardless, these dudes are not going to take it well. No. Especially if Definitely he lives. Not. Yeah. Right? The whole thing failed because of her. He lives. He goes to jail and he's like, we take this bitch down. Yes. And she's got no one. Nobody's going to protect her. No. She no, just works at the bodyguard. hotel. She just went right back to the hotel yeah. and she was shot the next day. Yeah. And her father was killed too. And they probably <laughs> killed her little friend up at the desk too. Oh, I loved her. Just for standing in. Because these yeah. kinds of movies, they end like this and it's like, you or, guys are you know forgetting. What? Maybe, maybe she went into like, like protective custody. Like into the, uh, what is that called? Into the thick of it. Into the thick of it? No, into the witness protection program. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. That's probably what happened. Instead of her getting killed, the government, the CIA or the FBI or whoever were, were like, you know what? You're at risk now. And you helped thwart this terrorist plot. So have a new identity. 
here's another hotel for you to work at in another city. Yeah. She died. I like my version. <laughs> <laughs> she died. This kind of organization is not going to take what she did well. Yeah. They, they had a botched assassination attempt. Like, the only way that this movie would have ended that way, and I would have been okay and been like, okay, she probably was all right, is if, like, the Coast Guard tracked them down and they killed Killian Murphy. Mm. Like, if he would have got shot in the head and then we saw the Coast Guard arrest all those guys. Then, they, then the people might not know, especially if, like, they got into a shootout and they killed everyone on the boat. Then I would be like, okay, the the people who hired them probably don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. And they might not come after her. Yeah. But when they left and he lived probably and went to jail, she's fucking dead. <laughs> she's dead, dude. There's <laughs> no way he didn't send a bunch of dudes at her. Yeah. So just say it. I'm just saying. That's it's a bummer. It's a, it's a shitty ending. Yeah. To, like tacked on that I wrote. But it's 100% on. true. Anyways, um, this movie opens with a trigger. Yep, it's triggering Kaylee's PTSD of working with the public as a receptionist. How did you? How did you feel? (laughs) I was triggered by it. For uh, what was her name? The girl at the front desk. I don't remember. (laughs) I never remember names, so I don't know. Terrible, Cynthia. 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 Yeah, I felt awful for Cynthia. I feel like I have been in Cynthia's shoes before, even though I don't work in hospitality. No. But those people suck so bad. Yeah. So bad. They're yeah. awful to her. And she's like really sweet and trying to help them. Like honestly, she does everything right. The only thing that like sets that starts to set them off is when she like has them to calm down. Oh, and the God, woman yeah. and, and her husband just start freaking out. They're like, we were calm. We were calm up until this point. They're just so horrible. She does admit that she was the one that canceled their booking. By signing in, she was like, oh, I think I signed in and erased their appointment. Which yeah. she says right in front of them. Which yeah, probably didn't I know. Add, like, she yeah. turns away and, like, says it to the phone. But yeah, but they're, they like, right it. there. Yeah. 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 But it was, I mean, it, they literally got, they got another room. And they got their whole thing paid for. And they were still, like, pissy about it. But, unfortunately, do you think, if they were nice, they would have got their room comped? Maybe. Probably not. I don't know. I don't I, like there's that. A chance. I don't like thinking that you have to be... I'm like, not saying you should. You should No, yeah. I, I'd rather pay for the room and not be an asshole. Yes, but... He, yeah, exactly. Even if you, like, are switched to another room and have to pay for it. But, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think that... I don't know. In that case, I feel like she would have probably tried to comp them. As long as nice as long as they can get you a room, like what? Who cares? Well, there's also like if that she's too. like, because there's rooms available, and yeah. she's like, oh my god, I I've canceled their booking, and it's like, okay, put them in another. So room. put them in another room. Yeah, like, this isn't that complicated. Yeah, like if it was sold out, sure, and they rented their room out. away to somebody else, but she just erased their booking right then. Yeah. So there's no way that room is booked, especially in 2005 yeah, when there was know. no online bookings. But right? she's like, I got it off the internet. I have a confirmation. I'm just sure, like, but it, like oh people, people weren't renting rooms like they do now no, online. You're right. That they was weren't. they. They probably printed their itinerary, but I bet you they didn't book their their appointment their their uh, room online. They probably called oh, sure. and then got like a confirmation number or something that was emailed to them and yeah. then they printed it. Yeah. Um, in 2005, maybe websites like that were like, I don't know, Priceline and this and that were at that point. 2005, that's a that's quite a while ago now. You're talking about almost, can you even believe this? Oh, that's almost 20 years ago. I know. That's almost 20 that's years ago. That's, that's 18 years ago. Like, yeah. if someone was born in 2005, they're 18 years old. I know. I know. That always trips like, me what? out to think that the kids, that, people that are born after 2000 now, like, or on, you know, in 2000, like, they're 23. Oh, sure. Like, that's crazy to me. That's they, like, uh, I remember when I was like, you know, because everybody born after 2000, I was like, oh, wow, like, they're super young. They're babies. Oh, of course. <laughs> I was class like, of 2000. Oh, man, I'm from... 
the old century. <laughs> I'm class of 2000, so someone being born in 2000 to me is like a baby. But yeah. They're like... They're 23 they're now. 23 they're years adults. old. They're full-on adults. They're still babies. They're, that's but. wild. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I... Don't get me wrong. I Do I think we should... That we should reward the people who treat you better? Of course. Yes. Right? But I think more oftentimes than not, like... There are times where you being sweeter probably gets you more, but I think typically with, especially with like corporations and stuff who don't sure. want bad publicity and they don't want you giving shit and they just are like, they have enough money and they don't really care. And they're just kind of like, you know what? Just give them whatever the fuck they want. Just shut them up. I just, right? I believe that you should be like respectful and kind to people until they're giving you a reason, a reason not, not to. to be like sure. you need to match their energy and sometimes that's hard because sometimes you're nice to them in the beginning and then they warm up to you but they're like mean to start out with kill them with kindness but yeah i'm like, not good at that i but especially with like customer service jobs like that i definitely feel like you have to always remember that those are people like they're not robots <sighs> You know, like, you can't just treat them horribly just because you're upset and something didn't go your way. Like, they've had to deal with a bunch of things like that before, even, like, in that same day. Yeah. And it's just not fair to, to any of them. Cynthia did a good job. Yeah. So, all right. Anyway. Um, then we get Kyle Gal Galner, or however the hell you say this name. He's one of the kids on the plane. Um, he most recently was the detective in Smile. Mm -hmm. um, which was cool to see. And uh, connection to Wes Craven here. He was also in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Um, but he has a very, very small role here. And in another connection, actually, to Wes Craven, he is also in Scream 5 as oh, well. Yeah. So, um, hmm. but it was interesting to see him here because those kinds of roles, like his, they're like non-existent. Like, oh, sure. it's his brother or his friend, whoever, who has, like, a pen. Yeah. And she takes that pen. It's, like, a Frankenstein pen or something. Is that, like, Frankenstein's monster? The reason I thought it was a dinosaur, but I think you're right. I think it's, like, Frankenstein. Whatever <laughs> it is. But, like, those characters literally exist just for her to steal a pen from. Yes. They have, like, very little lines, but they... I don't know. I think it's, like, to break up the monotony of like just focusing on two people you have to kind of go around the plane and show a few other people sure yeah. otherwise it's like what do we do you know i can't Which focus too much on this kind of funny because there's like we were just talking about stephen king earlier you know he has several books like gerald's game which is one person sure. and then obviously misery which is two people and there's nobody else sure but stories, even but even in gerald's so... game she has to she has to talk to imaginary people. You're right. Because, like, if she's in a room by herself... You're right. I, but I'm more mean, like... That would not work. So, really, Misery is a better example of that, though. Sure. I mean, but, yeah. I mean, Misery is a fucking masterpiece. I know. And it we is. do... Un, but, even in Misery, we do break away from that story quite a bit to focus on... And I don't think of them as pointless because I do like them, but ultimately... The sheriff is really just kind of like false hope mm -hmm. in that movie. Mm -hmm. And so they keep kind of cutting back to him to see what the outside world is doing about Paul Sheldon's disappearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like, and you get some cute, really cute, uh, cute banter between the husband and his wife. Mm -hmm. um, I love, I love them. Like their dynamic together. Uh, but ultimately it's the false hope. He, he does nothing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Spoilers for Misery. Yes. If you haven't seen it, you should be watching it. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can't. It's it's very hard to just have like two characters, unless it's like my dinner with Andre or something, where you're just gonna get two characters for the entire film. Hmm. It's a, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, all right, and yeah, this this was one of another film that. This was another film, should I say? I was going to say something different there. I was going to say this is one of those films, and then I was going to say this is a dead matter. <laughs> this is another film that Kaylee and I were watching that I'm going to 
uh, say was like um, fresh. And then most recently, another one. What was it? Um, Where we were like, oh, this sucks that we know this goes bad because they're really good together. Was it an attachment? Oh, atta- yeah. Attachment was one. I think that is it. But yeah, you watch it and uh, with Sebastian Stan and 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 the and the girl um, in Fresh, which was was that Dakota Johnson? No, who was it? I definitely don't know. Can't remember, but yeah, it sucks because they're like such a great couple and they yes. have such great chemistry, and you're like, oh, I want this to work out. They yeah. seem really good together. You know, Killian Murphy and uh, Rachel McAdams, they were cute together, and they like. I don't know, the flirting and, uh, you know, when he's like talking about what kind of drink she would like and he mm-hmm. narrows it down to the sea breeze and it's the bay breeze and all that stuff. And, and they sit next to each other on the plane. If the whole setup until that point when he's like, we have your father or whatever, like it's a romantic comedy. Yeah. Right. That yeah. like, you know, she's the hardworking girl. Cause this is like every lifetime movie, right? Sure. This is every like, this is like every either Netflix or, or, or Lifetime uh, rom-com, Christmas rom-com these days where there's the, there's the girl who works too much and she comes home for the holidays and some guy fixes all of her problems with his dick. <laughs> like this is serious. Like she's like, oh my God, I forgot what I was missing. That thing is penis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not totally that. Like, she's just happy to have, I think, a break, you know, from sure. thinking about work. But, yeah, like, they have a great chemistry in the beginning. And I think Killian Murphy, like, he has such an intense face. And he definitely, like, when he switches, he's <laughs> scary. He's so scary. His eyes are terrifying and i think that you know he's a wonderful actor that's able to um you know convey that emotion but like yeah like him in the beginning with with uh with her it's just like super sweet and flirty and she's letting her guard down and the audience is letting their guard down and then whenever you find out what's actually happening it's like oh shit no way (laughs) yeah and uh he's just awful for the rest of the film i mean he's uh, a sociopath. Psychopath. I mean, if, if you took your girlfriend to this movie and you were like, I'm taking you to a rom com, mm. they would buy it up until he did that. And then they'd be sure. like, You motherfucker, this isn't yeah. no rom com. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Killian Murphy definitely has a good, like, psycho look when he wants to Mm -hmm. but he just doesn't have the the physical presence for me to care Mm. he is like smaller stature (sighs) smaller stature he's like your size yeah if that guy started doing that shit to me on the plane you remember that scene in commando when he goes down and he's (laughs) and he breaks the guy's neck and then gets him like a freaking blanket (laughs) and he's like don't wake my friend he's dead tired that would have been Killian Murphy on the plane, like two seconds into that conversation. Be like, I have your father. I'd be like, oh, really? Hold on. <laughs> and that'd be it. But it works really well for him in this because he's not really trying to overpower her physically. It's all about the threats of her father's safety. I actually, and... I actually like his casting because in the end, I can believe that she can hold her own against him physically. Sure. Yeah. And then there's also that. Right? Because mm-hmm. we watch these movies. Where, you know, the guy who is going after the girl right. is, like, way too big. And yeah. it's like, you know, like, even though I love this movie, and there's tons of examples I can give, but this is the first one that came off the top of my mind, is I love Unhinged, right? We I've watched it a bunch with Russell Crowe. Um, and, and, and I love I love the film, and I, and I love that she gets the best, and I, all that stuff. But there's a point in the movie when he throws her across the room mm-hmm. and then he gets on top of her and he punches her as hard as he can in the face. Yeah. It's over. She's gone. It's done. She's not getting up from that. There's no recovering. Mm-hmm. The size of Russell Crowe in that movie versus how big she is, if he hit her with all of his force, she would be either dead or in a coma. Yeah. Right? So with Killian Murphy, when they go at it, 
And he's not really the hit man, right? He's not like a trained killer. He's just like the intimidator. I'm like, okay, I can buy this. Mm-hmm. I can buy this. And I like that. Yeah. So it's not, a, it's not a knock on him. It's just that with her in that position, I feel it. Because I'm in her position. Right. right? I'm in her body. I'm through in... her eyes. Yeah, exactly. Right? I know I'm not, she's not me. Yes. So, but like, if I'm putting myself in the seat next to him, I'm like. Right. But that's, yeah, exactly. It's her versus him. And so it works really well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, good casting for me on that. So I just want to, I do want to point that out. Um, he does knock her out though. One headbutt. There's no way. There's no way. And this is kind of that movie thing where, you know, something like that happens and no one notices. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of the film, it is a, it is just kind of movie convenience. Because even just like their conversation, yeah. like you can hear people, people hear. talking. 100,000 percent. Like they're sitting right in front of you and it's yeah. the red eyes. So people are quiet yeah. already. They're sleeping. And if, even if they're whispering, yes. like you would hear... What they were talking about. So, yeah, I definitely, you know, as shocking as it is when he headbutts her, it is a little unbelievable that nobody would even, like, catch that at all. Sure. Um, Or him chasing her through the mall. Or him freaking watching her as she walks down the aisle and, like, staring at her as she's, like, going to the bathroom and just sitting there and staring the whole time. Yeah. People notice that kind of shit. I mean, on one hand, with that, like, if people are asleep, which, but I feel like a lot but of no them one are was. awake. Well, you but, see like, the red the eye, like, if they were asleep, then I could believe, like, they're not going to notice him standing and staring. But, yeah, like, there are a ton of people that are still awake. Especially, so. like, the duty told off. That be, That guy's eyes would be on him the whole flight. Because that's, when you have that kind of confrontation... Just someone now that's like has a spotlight on them to you. Sure. Yeah. I don't, right. And yeah. he would be looking for any excuse to like call that guy out or, or expose that guy. Right. Because he embarrassed him. Mm-hmm. So he'd be like, what the fuck is this? And like he would like, you know, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I, I just think, yeah, it's movie stuff. But if you're going to talk that loud like they did and he's going to knock her out, he's going to push her into the bathroom. Right next to a bunch of seats. Yeah, I mean... And no. they're going to throw each other around in there. I know people thought they were fucking and it's the Mile High Club. But it, no. I'm sorry. You're not going to pick up a girl and throw her into the bathroom, knock her out in her seat, and tell her that we're going to kill your father if you don't do this <laughs> out loud while everyone is in there quiet. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. That's, that's that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that the turbulence adds just that little extra stress. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, yeah, of course the flight's rocky too. Right. Right? Why wouldn't it be? Um, But, yeah, I mean, he straight up full on attacks her and pushes her into the bathroom right in front of that kid. Yes. Because she's waiting in line for the bathroom. Yes, she is. And he just pushes right past her, throws her into the bathroom, and the kid's just kind of like... And the well, kid's yeah, like and 11. Then immediately after the stewardess comes to take her yeah. back to her seat which is when she's like oh a man went in there with her yeah they think they're fucking i right. get that but like she would have been like no he threw her in there sure yeah like kids don't have a filter yeah right kids are kids are the ones the most likely to say something like yeah. adults are pussies and ad- adults don't like confrontation but kids kids will point out anything if somebody like with a deformity walks by kids are like where's his arm and <laughs> What's up with his eye? Mom, what's going on with his eye? Why is his eye so messed up? They don't have like, any Kids pressure. just don't know how to hold that shit back. Yeah. So if like some... Because trust me, I deal with this all the time. I, t- I had to take my kids like across the street once without my car, the car seats because we forgot them or something. Got out of the car. The first thing is as soon as we step out of the car, Mom, Dad, let us drive without car seats. Yeah. And she's like, excuse me? And I'm like, girls, God fuck like that was like two days ago and they were just like waiting like pins and needles yeah. to tell on me yeah even though i had no other choice <laughs> just so ridiculous anyways kids yeah there's no way there's no way. so a lot of a lot of like suspension of disbelief with this film for sure um yeah uh i like that the little girl trips him though yes i do so too we'll we'll call that a win yes she's like i saw you yeah, she totally knew what was up. <laughs> yeah, he gets right there, stabbed in the throat. 
freaking Agent Strom style from Saw 5. And I'm the only one that got out of there. Yeah, I like... Fucking hole in my throat. I like that his voice is all messed up afterwards. It makes him even scarier. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he gets a sick tie that he wears as like a scarf. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Looks good on him. Yeah, it does. Um... You're, I mean, especially in modern times, like 2023, fucking forget it. But, like, you're not chasing a girl through an airport. I know, without anybody noticing. I know that she's kind of trying to avoid the cops herself because she doesn't want to get taken in because she's trying to get home to her dad. But a dude chasing a chick, especially one as pretty as Rachel McAdams. I'm sorry, this is fucked up, but humans are fucked up. Like... A beautiful woman running from a guy like that sure. when she's clearly like being chased and scared dude i'm no not not through an entire airport you security dudes you're not getting through that without some people stepping in and being like what but the in fuck? this case she doesn't want people to because a they're after her doesn't matter and also, she needs to get to her dad. Let me chase you through an airport. No, Let's I'm just see saying, how fast I get. I agree them. with you. I'm saying that it worked out for her though, and she didn't want people to be noticing. Yeah. Yeah. How did he bandage his head? Just stop bleeding. He it head butted her, it and just... then started bleeding. And then the 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 flight attendant came up, and he's just like, "Oh, we're fine." I guess his hair kind of covered it, but yeah. like it would have been bleeding down his it face. It would have. She would have noticed the blood. It wasn't a lot of blood originally, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, man, head wounds. Trust me, there's heads are vascular. Like you get cuts on your on your heads and shit. Like on your on like your forehead, shit bleeds. Yeah, and it's it does it takes a while to stop. Mm-hmm. Nick someone's ear with your scissors. Trust me, it never stops bleeding. <laughs> it's super annoying. Uh, anyway, yeah. I, I don't care. It's just, <laughs> come on. Um, yeah, so she steals a car. She goes down there. We get the low battery on the cell phone trope. Uh, of course, always happens. Um, you liked her reaction to driving right into the hitman. Yes. I don't I know why he was like walking out of the house and hadn't killed her dad. Checking on him, maybe? Like he was just going over to see if he was still in there? I don't know. Yep, still breathing. Still in there. Yeah, I think she reacted really well to just, like, drive into him immediately instead of trying to, like, get out of the car or drive off or whatever. Like, she had a good reaction to that. I'm pretty sure that they would have had a time limit. Sure. Where they would have been like, hey, listen, my my flight's going to land by this time. If I haven't called you by this time, kill. Of course. Something And maybe that is what happened. Maybe that's what he was going over there to do. He was like, I left my... Kraber or whatever <laughs> freaking knife. <laughs> K-Bar. K-Bar. In Kraber. the car. <laughs> You've been playing too much Apex Legends. <laughs> I don't know. Get the Kraber. Uh, and so, but yeah. When you said Kraber, I was like, it's a sniper rifle? <laughs> what? <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I think that she had actually really good reactions throughout the film. And I thought that she made pretty good decisions and everything. So, I like the ending. I like her going in and, um... You know, him showing up and them fighting throughout the house. I thought that was really uh, well, like, choreographed. Mm -hmm. uh, Them running around. And it was just satisfying. It was a nice, satisfying ending. Especially when she, you know, goes to the hotel and gets to tell all those people to take a comment card and shove it up their ass. Yeah. Yeah. You think they came back? No. No. (laughs) I think that they probably wrote a really angry letter. Yeah. Did you think they shoved it up their ass? No. Probably not. They did not. Probably. Yeah. Bummer. Yes. What if they did, though? Like, you know what? Good advice. Good advice. We're going to do that. Yes. Um, I don't like how expendable men are. I don't like it. I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't like it. I feel like, you know, that's like one of those inequality things. That we as a society just don't ever really talk about. It's like people love to talk about the inequality for men, for women, and 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 you know, um, like other races or whatever. But like, dudes are the first up on the auctioning block when it comes to anything. Yeah. In situations like Titanic, whatever. It's like, no, you stay behind and die because you have a penis. 
Like, where's where's the sexism then? What do, like, she was totally fine selling this guy out. Like, she wasn't totally fine, but she sold him out. But it wasn't until it was like, oh, it's the wife and kids, too. She was like, oh, wait, hold on. I've made a mistake. <laughs> I got to save them. Well, I mean. The guy. I don't know if it's just that it's a hundred percent. She was she was bummed. She was bummed. More but she was a hundred percent. She was committed to it di- until she finds out that it's the women and kids. I mean, I I and see I, what I, you're saying. I have no doubt it's my, it's the kids. I see what you're saying, but it, and it is probably also the kids. But it's more than just that. It's like one life versus five people or four people or whatever. So you think she would have made the call if it was just one of the kids? No, I don't. I don't think people make calls like that about kids. I think that that's a definite thing. But if it was a female, like senator or congresswoman, instead, and then she found out that her family was there, I think it would have been the same reaction. Sure. So, I just. But I understand. If you ever pay attention, yeah, to like anything, when it comes to like bank robberies or anything, it's like, why don't you let the women and children go? Yeah. It's like, whoa, hold on, wait. I'm yeah. sorry. What? Are we all equal or not? I mean, yes. <laughs> am, I, <but. laughs> am I not allowed to go because I have a penis? Where is the feminism now? Where? Why is it? Why is no chick raising their hand going? You know, I think I should stay with the men. <laughs> I think you know we're all equals here. I'm yeah. gonna stay. No one's gonna say that. No. All of a sudden, sexism and feminism dies when the Titanic starts going down, and it's like you know, honey. <laughs> You should stay with the boat. I mean, I guess, like, for as long as there's been, like, oppression for females, that's, like, the least that we get now. Is least, that the get... least my death? <laughs> we get to get out of those hostage situations first. <laughs> wow, we're so lucky. <laughs> well, this is why we get paid more. Just kidding. Man. <laughs> Just kidding. It's, it's the savior tax. The savior yeah. tax? When the when the ship goes down, I have to stay with the ship. That costs you fifteen cents an hour. Wow. <laughs> that costs you fifteen percent. That's wow. what it is. You guys want to stay in the bank with us? You make equal. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go when the ship goes down? You got to take a pay cut. <laughs> oh my God. That's that, them's the rules. <laughs> Anyways, all right. See you in the comments, blast me for being a sexist piece of shit. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.